it's now like a drive and ambition in me because of everything that I've been through. I am actually going to um, put on the screen um, bits of my application to walk you through it. Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking about how I got a scholarship to the LSE. So I am an Ugla Family Scholar. It is the largest scholarship that the LSE offers. To be exact, it's £61,353 over the three years of study. That includes guaranteed accommodation. For example, I've been funded to stay at um, LSE Bankside House. It also includes personalised career coaching, meeting with the donors and his family. Basically how it works is, £5,000 is deducted from your tuition fees, so there's only £4,250 left to pay. You can either take out student finance to pay that or use your own money if you have it. I took out student finance to pay that bit. I think it's £15,000 stipend that you get and about 10,000 of that is spent on the Bankside House accommodation and then you'll have £5,000 left for yourself for the year. It's designed so that it's enough money so that you don't have to take out a maintenance loan from student finance, but um, you can still take out a student finance to sort of top up that £5,000. But before I ramble on too much about scholarship, the structure of the video is going to be how I got the scholarship, so just like a general overview of things that I did. And then in the next section, I'm going to do what I did to stand out in my application specifically. I am actually going to um, put on the screen um, bits of my application to walk you through it and tell you the structure of how I wrote a successful application to get the Oak Family Scholarship. At the end, I'm going to do a bit of a Q&A section with questions I've been asked on LinkedIn and Instagram with regards to the scholarship and uh, just like some tips and advice. Okay, so I just realised that I've never said my name, but my name is Alicia and I was on a scholarship to sixth form, which I have another video on, which I'll link in the description below. So um, being a sixth form scholar definitely made me more aware of the existence of scholarships. So at the time that I was making my UCAS application and selecting my five universities that I wanted to apply to, I kind of had in the back of my mind that I wanted to go to a university that had um, you know, the sort of facilities to give scholarships and to give bursaries. In that sense, I specifically applied to universities that were rich or wealthy, just had a lot of extra money to give out large scholarships. When I go into pers my personal background, it'll make a bit of sense, but I didn't want the sort of financial side of being in debt when I come out of university, just because I just know that my parents are not in the position to be able to help me out at all or to send me like, I don't know, any sort of allowance or anything. So I definitely wanted to set myself up in the right way. I looked into scholarships at Durham, Cambridge, and LSE, because they, they were the three that I wanted to go to. Different universities work in different ways. For example, at Durham, you would look for the scholarships um, that you wanted to apply for, and you would specifically apply for that scholarship. So say Durham offered five scholarships, you would find the one that you think you're eligible for and that you want, I guess, and you'd apply for that specifically. Whereas at LSE, how, it, how the application process works is, it's one set application. You will be submitted into a pool of candidates for each scholarship that you're eligible for. So LSE has a lot of scholarships to offer actually, so it's quite good. I didn't specifically apply for the Ugla Family Scholarship. I was aware of it and I really wanted it. I didn't think I was going to get it at all because it's very competitive, but here I am luckily. Also, being a sixth form scholar meant that I was aware of the fact that you have to sort of maintain a certain standard as a scholar student. I think this is sort of implicit, it's not like explicitly said when you get a scholarship, but you know, you are expected to be like the brightest students in the sixth form and the students that are doing extracurriculars and stuff like that, because there's obviously a lot of smart students at the sixth form who are not on the scholarship. So it has to make sense, like why you're getting so much funding and not the other students. So because of that, even in year 12, when I wasn't even thinking about getting scholarships to university, I was constantly doing extracurriculars and making myself stand out because I know that with getting into top universities and, and getting scholarships to top universities, it's not just about your grades. For example, when you make your LSE scholarship application, like I have actually been told by my program manager of my current scholarship that they don't look at your A-level grades or your GCSE grades because they know if you get the offer to go to LSE, you're already smart. So it's more about your personal story and what makes you stand out. So there's two aspects to that of me standing out. One was just the fact that I was a scholar student already, so I was maintaining a 
certain standard. The other one is just my personal background, sort of a um, testament to my character. But the stuff that I've went through, I don't like let those things, those personal trials defeat me. Rather, I use them as motivation. I didn't always used to do that, and don't get me wrong, it's a lot like easier saying it now than it is doing it. For example, I don't know, if there's like a, a family death or I've just moved school again for like the 11th time or something. At the time, I'm gonna be really disheartened and it's easy to just lie in bed and not get up and not go to school and not care. But I started to adopt this attitude of not to compartmentalize everything, but use it to actually accelerate me. The biggest thing that was really hard was that I moved from Leeds, being in quite a culturally diverse place, to move into a tiny village in Scotland where there was only one other mixed race girl in my year, possibly two black people in the entire school. That's obviously really challenging and you can let that get on top of you or how I see it is you can allow that to motivate you to push harder and to move past those circumstances. It's now like a drive and ambition in me because of everything that I've been through. I guess sort of the way that I do that, one way is perspective. I always have told myself, all the time, I always tell myself everything I've been through is not that deep. I would say it's not that deep. Like people are going through worse situations. Like I'm really lucky. Like I have, an, I have a phone, I have a MacBook, I have an iPad. There's so much things to be grateful of no matter what I've been through. I'm half Jamaican. And when my dad took me to Jamaica and I saw like real poverty, it just made me appreciate more what I actually have. So that's one way that I stay on top of things. Another thing is, I'm not just gonna credit all to myself, it's environment. So I just, honestly, I just see it as a motivation that I want to just be better than my parents, I guess. To not have to put my children through what I've been through growing up. Hopefully that doesn't come across horrible, but yeah. So I've mentioned about my personal background and about me being a scholar and how that made me stand out. And now I'll specifically go into the things I did to stand out for my scholarship application and just in general, to be honest. First thing, like even chronologically, is um, I met the Queen. I performed a poem to her when I was really young and I always reference this in like any job application. Then, like I said already, I got a scholarship to sixth form. And then this is something that everyone can do is I took a lot of leadership roles in sixth form, a lot. So that is honestly like the best way that you can stand out. I built a good rapport with the teachers and a good relationship with them and offered me the opportunity to become editor of the newspaper. I also became house captain and the big one is I became school captain and that was towards the end of year 12. I mean I'm thankful to course because they allowed me to do all these things despite the fact that I was a new student. That definitely helps because I mean that definitely just shows that you're very keen, you're very ambitious, you know, you, you want to be a leader. The people that decide um, whether you're going to get the scholarship, they want to know if, it sounds mad, but if they're going to have a good return to their investment, is this person that they're given the scholarship going to grow up and be some sort of world leader or grow up and achieve great things? Then another thing that I did was um, essay competitions. I think I did about two or three of these. If you're watching this in about year 12 or something, definitely look into essay competitions. How it works is, you'll go onto the websites for certain essay competitions and you'll pick a question. So I did a lot on economics sort of questions. And it's actually great because you, some of them you get paid. Like I remember getting paid 500 pounds for, for coming second, which is actually a lot of money, isn't it? It's quite great, especially at that age. And then other stuff I did was, I watched a lot of lectures around economics and politics. Um, because that's the degree that I'm on at the moment, just to showcase why I'm interested in that. And all these things just make you stand out. It shows that you're interested in your degree and that you're going to go on to achieve great things. The next section, I'm going to specifically go into my application. So I've got my laptop here, I'm gonna read a bit. I'm going to tell you how I wrote it. How it works is, there's a lot of questions to fill out, to be honest with you. This, this is something you fill out after you've got your LSE offer. So that's why you put in your applicant number, um, your name, your address, all that jazz, your ethnicity, your degree, your previous schools. If you notice, it doesn't ask for your grades because like I said, it's more about your story, any sort of employment and just financial situation. This is a part where I expressed um, how much my parents are earning and then that sort of shows why you would need extra funding um, to go to university. Then there's a section on other financial support. So this is other bursaries that you've secured. For example, I had a bursary from the Leather Sellers Company, which are the people that funded my scholarship to sixth form. You just want to be as transparent as possible with your financial situation. Then there's a section below, and this is optional, I'm pretty sure. Um, this is if you want to be considered for the LSE bursary. So 
This is quite short, obviously 250 words. What I wrote is just about why I'm in financial need. So I mentioned that I've been raised in a single parent household, therefore only one parent contributes to my upbringing. I spoke about how my father sort of lost his job because of COVID. And then I spoke about my mother. My mother's long-term unemployed, so I mentioned that as well. So it just sort of shows that I'm not going to get any funding for my parents when I go to university. I also mentioned about the fact that I had to work part-time through sixth form to sort of help out with um, a few bills and stuff around the house. As a final sentence, I said, I feel like everyone could sort of use the sentence, so I'll read it out. It says, I believe that if I do not receive additional help, I will be hampered in areas such as funding, transportation, books, food, visiting family members, obtaining a laptop, obtaining a healthy well-being. In the next section, this is a big part. This is 1,000 words on your story. I'm going to sort of explain the structure that I used and hopefully this will help you if you're making a scholarship application. What I did was, my first paragraph was everything I've been through. I started off with the negative. Then my second paragraph was my achievements and how I've moved past what I've been through. Then my third paragraph, um, I talk about my career ambitions and what I want to do in the future. I use a little a few sentences from my actual UCAS personal statement here as well um, just to back up like why I love economics and politics. Then my final section was why I'd benefit from the scholarship so what I'd actually use the funding for. I'll go into a little bit more detail. My first paragraph was um, everything that I've been through. This is stuff like um, me attending nine schools resulting in absences from schools and just the feelings of disconnection, my mother's mental health um, and how that sort of impacted mine and my siblings well-being at the time, experiences of racism that I experienced um, in Scotland. Then I spoke about the move from Scotland to London. This move from Scotland to London was me moving from my mother and my siblings to go and live with my father. So it wasn't just also the cultural shift of moving to from a predominantly white area to a predominantly black area. It was also just leaving everything that I know to go and live somewhere completely new and with completely new people. Then, doo -doo -doo -doo. And this is um, the sad part of my life that I went through, but during my GCSE years, um, I had two um, family deaths. Um, it was my uncle and my stepfather. And I just spoke about that and the feelings that I felt with that. Then, that's the heavy stuff. <laughs> Then the next part is how I move past those things. So I said, um, I recently realized I can't pretend that these personal trials were an illusion because they have shaped me into the person that I am today. Um, this is why I fight so hard for my education, blah, 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 etc., etc. And then I show how like certain achievements I've made, which I already told you guys. Then in the third paragraph, this is about why I want to study what I wanted to study. So I mentioned a bit about why I want to go to LSE and it's because I want to go into public policy. I wanted to go to LSE because of its global environment. It's a very diverse place and there's a lot of international students. So that was something for me that I feel like would make me like a, I don't know, like a well-rounded economist, I guess. Then I just said about my motivations behind um, my degree. I don't think I'll go into that in too much detail. I'll probably do that in another video, like a personal statement video. And then the last part, is just talking about my parents' financial situation. At the end, I say something like, a scholarship could mean the difference between me working overtime and attending an economics and politics networking event where I can impress key people in my fields. I would be honored to be awarded a scholarship so that money does not become an impediment to my success. That's pretty much it, that's my application. Yeah, then there's a reference from a teacher and you attach your CV as well and that's pretty much it. It's quite long, as you can see, but um, it was definitely worth it. This video is very long, but hopefully it's helpful. Um, and the last section is a Q&A section. So these are questions that I have been asked on LinkedIn and Instagram. One of the questions I got was, how much time um, should I spend on the scholarship application? There's not a set amount of time that, that you should spend, but obviously put a lot of time into it if it's something that you really want to get, especially because you'll be in your summer holidays um, during the time that you're writing it and you'll have a lot of free time on your hand, so dedicate as much time as possible to it. The second question I got was, does the application require research? I'd say no, no it doesn't. You shouldn't research like the scholarship and, and anything like that because um, as you gain from the gist of the video, it's about you and your personal story. The next question I got was, how would you approach the question about how you'd use the money? I've mentioned that earlier in this video, but 
just say like how you would allocate the money if it's something where you need to purchase a laptop or you need an ipad for your studies or there's certain books that you need to get for example i travel from london to leeds sometimes to visit family members so that's something that i mentioned as well because obviously train tickets are quite expensive you could probably work out a bit of a budget of how much you'd actually spend as well if you wanted to do you have any general tips on creating a successful application include everything so don't think that any experience that you've been through is too small if that makes sense include um any personal trial that you've been through because what you might perceive as something insignificant or something that's not that deep um, might actually be quite a serious thing i definitely experienced that when i was writing my, my biggest tip as well was just mention how you've overcome those things how you've moved past those things and how you've achieved certain things um, after experiencing those personal trials next question was what has it been like to be an ugly family scholar has it helped you in your time at lse so far this is a great question i'm i'm actually writing a blog post currently about being an ugly scholar i'll probably put the link in the comment section because i might upload this video before the blog is actually um published if you're interested you can read that the last question that i have here is can you describe the moment when you receive the scholarship when i re first received the scholarship it was quite funny actually because it went into my junk mail so maybe that's a good tip actually check your junk mail after you sent off your application so i didn't even know that i got offered it one of my best friends actually got a scholarship beforehand and I remember not receiving anything because I had gone to my junk mail. So I was like, yeah, I'm definitely not getting a scholarship. I can be quite pessimistic sometimes, to be honest, like that. I was on holiday, got an email saying, Alicia, you need to respond. Like, do you want the scholarship advice? We're going to give it to someone else. I was so shocked. Like, I was so, so happy. I can't even describe it. But I literally, I started crying. I'm quite emotional. I cry at everything. But I just cried so much. I was so happy. Like, that's literally one of my happiest moments, definitely. And then I called on my family. Do you think there's any disadvantages? Advantages of being a good I think I mentioned this earlier, but depending on your character, you may actually see it as an as a pressure to perform well. I'm not saying that the ugly family themselves sort of put on any pressure for you to do well, but I just I guess just sort of knowing in the back of your mind that you're on the highest scholarship at LSE, you're gonna sort of apply that pressure to yourself to do really well, to get the top grades, you know, to excel, to get certain internships. And that might be a negative thing for you, but I think the way I see it is it's an incentive to work harder. Okay, this has been a long one. Currently it's 30 minutes, so hopefully I can get it down to 20 or 25. But please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Comment if you want to see more videos like this. Like I was thinking of doing a video with the other Ugly Family Scholars. So if that's something you'd want to see, let me know. And please subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this in the future. Thank you. Bye.